So when we think about all that, the, the player that he is off the court, on the court, one of the best shooting big men in the game, no question, hands down. Why did they trade him? Well, it, it, this so there's a couple of, of things about it. I mean, I think, first of all, you know, initially when you, you see a trade like this happen, you're thinking, oh, this is a salary dump, right? Mm-hmm. Like like the, a, a, t- a team with ownership issues, uh, you know, they're, you know, they're going to pay a big luxury tax. They're trying to just dump out of it and um and not pay that tax even though they have a very good team that might even be capable of winning a championship and um but that's really not accurate in way of look at this now there were real financial implications to this deal because right now the timberwolves are in the second apron they're mm-hmm. still in the second apron so um they were go- they are going to save quite a bit of money luxury tax wise by trading towns for randall and divincenzo and, and bates Giap because it's about a $10 million difference between mm. those three versus what Carl makes. So you save a lot of luxury tax money, but more importantly in the Timberwolves' eyes is with this new collective bargaining agreement, when you're in that second apron, you have severe restrictions on the trades you can make. You mm. have severe restrictions on free agents you can sign. And if you're in that apron for for multiple years, you run the risk of having your first round draft pick just bumped all the way down to the bottom of the round. And they look at having Anthony Edwards as a 23-year-old that's not close to his prime yet, He's mm. but he's bursting onto the scene. And they they have you know, a max deal with Cat, a max deal with Ant, a max deal with Rudy Gobert. Jade McDaniels is making a bunch of money. Nas Reed is making some good money. They just didn't have a way of kind of getting back to uh, being under that second apron relatively soon so that they can retain some of that flexibility and optionality from a team building standpoint so they can continue to surround Edwards with the talent that they need to be competitive, not just next year, but like five years down the road, six, seven years mm-hmm. down the road. And so um, that was a big factor in kind of deal. They just needed to sort of redistribute their cap sheet. Towns makes $220 million over the next four years. And that was just going to be too much for them to be able to dig out of. And so this way, by making that deal, you get Randall and DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo has one of the best contracts in the NBA. Um, It also allows them maybe a little bit more flexibility to re-sign Nas Reed Mm. next year. And so they have, they and and also you get two guys for one. Um, Randall's an all-NBA player. DiVincenzo is a great player role man um uh and and so i think that the wolves looked at this and said it not only helps us long term financially but they actually also believe that it can give them a little bit more depth and a little bit more versatility for the short term as well and so they ultimately looked at this as soon as the knicks put divincenzo into the deal they said you know what that's we're probably not going to find a better deal than this we're eventually going to have to ca- trade cat so let's just do it now and and, and take a deal that we really like. And I have to imagine Nas Reed's development and progression over the last three years certainly had to factor into it, right? Absolutely. If, if they keep Cat, they have to say goodbye to Nas Reed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that the, not only his development, because he's turned into a player who uh, is a reasonable facsimile skill set wise to Cat. It's a big man, shoots threes, um, can put the ball in the deck and get to the hole all of those things. And that's a great, it's a great player development story in and of itself. But also I'm telling you guys, like you have to be in the arena when Nas Reed gets introduced. Mm. Like it, it, he is an incredibly popular folk hero here for, for the, for the Timberwolves fan base. And so um, he, if they can find a way to keep him and he's going to make not anywhere close to what cat makes, and still may be able to be able to produce not what Cat does. Cat's you know gonna gonna produce more than Nas, but certainly at least get closer to that. Then um, they just looked at that as something that they they had to consider going forward. 
and they're adding in Randall. You're absolutely right. I think DiVincenzo's contract is one of the best in the NBA. He certainly proved that last year. I hated seeing his name in the deal. I was also I was always thinking it was you know maybe a Randall Robinson thing. Even though that would have been tough for me as well. DiVincenzo just played so well for the Knicks last year, and for the Wolves, I, I felt like they needed help, especially at the guard spot. I think they need an upgrade at, at over Conley. We'll see if you know Dillingham or one of those guys can eventually fill that spot. But I like. DiVincenzo adding him to that guard rotation because they needed some more punch, especially uh, off the bench um, from a shooting standpoint. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when you give up Cat, who is the, the, he is their best shooter, not their best shooting big man. He's their best shooter. And so when you give him up on a team with already with Gobert, who's a non-shooter, you have to find a way to generate more three-point shooting. And DiVincenzo... Um, not only shoots around the similar percent percentage of cat, but he shoots a higher volume. Yeah. And so I think that's going to give them a little bit different element to their offense. Last year, you know, as good, as great as cat is as an offensive player and as great as ant is as an offensive player, they were still 17th in the league in, in offensive efficiency. And so mm -hmm. one of their main priorities going into this season was to increase that offensive efficiency. And so they think that bringing DiVincenzo in gives them another shooter, another floor spacer. Also, Nikhil Alexander-Walker is a great role player, but he is streaky from an offensive standpoint. Yeah. So um, DiVincenzo gives them a little bit more consistency um, at that spot. And you're right, in terms of Conley is someone they lean really heavily on, but he's going to be 37 this year. Um, they, they know that they cannot give him in a huge workload during the regular season if they want him to be healthy in the playoffs and he's so important to what they do. So if DiVincenzo comes in and gives them another option, certainly not as a natural point guard, but somebody that can at least get you into your offense, that can help you reduce um, Conley's minutes. And it also means that they don't have to put so much pressure on Rob Dillingham, a 19 year old rookie to be ready right away to come in and just be a real uh, plus a contributor on a Western Conference Finals team. Like that's a lot mm, to ask yeah, any yeah. any rookie. And so this way they can ease him in as well. So DiVincenzo has a lot of of benefits that he brings to the table in addition to great shooting, really dogged defender, um, you know, and all and an all around good locker room guy as well. You know, when I was asked when the f trade first went down and people were asking, what what do you think about it? I was on the fence because mm -hmm. In the Randall for Cat situation, I, I almost see them being in the same same bracket where, you know, they're fan favorites. They they get a lot of credit for establishing something great, but could they be could they take their teams to the promised land where their team ceilings capped with them? I think it's an intriguing debate because that's what I felt like the Knicks were headed with Randall. And almost to a certain extent where Minnesota was heading with Carl Anthony Towns. And so I say, well, it's a question mark for a question mark. Well, what do you think? Yeah, no, it's it's been a really interesting trade to try and get my head around. I know that locally here, if there are the people who are against the trade, I think are all saying, wait a minute, you gave up Cat and all you're getting is Randall back as the um as the main piece. And I think there's a lot of people who don't really believe in Randall. Now you would know better than than, than any of them or, or or me as someone who watches watch them every game what exactly he brings to the table. But um from the the people that I talk to within the Wolves believe that people are are underrating Julius mm. and like and what kind of player he is. Now they there certainly is going to be a question mark about fit with Rudy Gobert. Um he's certainly a different kind of player than Cat in a different style. Um, he's not the shooter that cat is, but I think he's more physical and he gets to the rim a little bit more and, and things of that nature. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's, there has been a, I think around here, a lot of people have said Julius Randall is nowhere near cat. And, um, and so that's why the wolves lost this trade. But I think that internally they believe that the skill sets in the production are much, much closer than maybe some of the skeptics believe. With the prospect of Cat, though, I do 
it, it it does interest me because you know back in the summer when you know I spoke to members close to the organization who uh, you know let me know that the the interest in cat was was real and, and that they, there was a slim chance Julius would return you know but they talked about the prospect of spacing that floor for for Jalen Brunson and I just I it intrigues me because it's such a departure from where Tibbs has been with the traditional center and now they finally get that stretch shooting big. And I just wonder what, where is he going to take that and the the options in terms of their lineups that the Knicks are going to be able to put out there. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, that starting five now that you put Cat in that group is as good as almost any in the league. I mean, maybe Boston at, at full strength or, you know, there might be one or two other, but I think they're right at the top. I wonder about the depth a little bit. But um, I think that one thing that, really intrigues me about this deal for both sides is one of the sticky issues I think that both teams dealt with you had Cat was first in the door in Minnesota Randall was first in the door in New York and then both franchises had guards that came in and just great point rocketed right past both of them and yeah. in Minnesota Jalen Brunson in New York and I think that there are complicating factors when you have the established guy has to sort of pass the torch. Now, I think that that was one of Kat's strengths in his mm. time here was being gracious and accepting Anthony Edwards, accepting Rudy Gobert, not being bitter or raising a stink about it at all. But yet there's always just this undercurrent that is ingrained that this has kind of been Cat's team for a long time. This has been Julius Randle's team for a long time. So how do you kind of really navigate that changing of the guard? Now, when you flip them both, now Julius Randle comes in and he knows this is Ant's team. Right. Like th That's where it's, the pecking order is established fully. Carl Anthony Towns is going to walk into that locker room and know that Jalen Brunson is the guy. And so I think that from that perspective, sort of slotting in the roles and 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 the pecking order is going to be a lot cleaner for both teams. And so um, in that respect, I do think I would expect Kat to be very gracious and very understanding of, you know, Jalen Brunson could run for mayor there and win. And um, and so he's there to support and be you know, be, you know, be a guy to help him. Um, whereas, you know, before it was, you know, kind of, this is my team and now Ant's coming in it's great, but um, how do you, how do you, how do you figure that out? So I just think that things are just cleaner on both sides now. Yeah. Um, same with Julius. Julius comes in, Hey, this is Ant's team. Now he wants to get his and he wants to help and he's got the contract and all that. But I just think it's easier for everyone to say, here's where it starts. Here's where we go. Here's where we all slot in. And the puzzle pieces kind of make a little bit more sense right away. <laughs>